Whoa! Oh, um, just up the up the flight manual. Uh, yeah, it looked like you were playing with the controls or something. No, no, uh, just the flight manual, you know. It's all set. It's all set. What's up? MCS Mahone here again with The Up Collective. If you've been cool enough to follow us through the first three episodes of our educational series, you've seen a lot of facts and theory about helicopters, but you may have wondered how they're controlled by the pilot. Well, now that's exactly what we're going to talk about here. First, let's knock out some easy concepts. The push-pull tube. These are just tubes with rod ends and bolts through the ends of them. You can push them or pull them. But what if we want to change the direction of the pushing or pulling? We do that with these nifty things called bell cranks. When you push a bell crank one way, it pushes or pulls another direction. By stringing push-pull tubes and bell cranks together, we can transfer motion from the helicopter controls anywhere we want in the helicopter, including all the way back to the tail rotor. Helicopter pilots have four main controls available to them. The cyclic, the collective, the pedals, and the throttle. Let's start with the pedals, which we call the anti-torque pedals. No, that's not the gas and the brake, nor are they rudder pedals like airplane pilots like to say. Those actually control the pitch of the tail rotor blades, which if you remember from previous videos, indirectly controls the blade's angle of attack and therefore how much lift they produce. Yes, the tail rotor produces lift just like the main rotor, it just directs that lift sideways. By moving these pedals, the pilot can control the helicopter yaw. That's the direction that the helicopter is pointed. The next control is the cyclic. This controls the pitch of the rotor blades individually as they spin around the rotor mast. Therefore, it tilts the plane of the main rotor in one direction or the other, forward, left, right, or back. Tilting the plane of the rotor disc causes the helicopter itself to follow almost immediately, so the cyclic controls the movement of the helicopter over the ground. The last control is the collective control. This controls the pitch of the rotor blades collectively. That is, it controls the pitch of the rotor blades altogether. It controls the pitch of the rotor oh, blades. I walked right into that. This controls the amount of lift the rotor blades are producing together. Thus, it's raised to take off and lowered to land. And other than takeoff and landing, the, the collective remains in pretty much the same position throughout the flight. Like any other vehicle, the engine also has a throttle. It works like any other throttle, except in the case of turbine helicopters, we typically leave it in the full open position and let a very expensive part called the fuel control unit dictate how much fuel goes to the engine. In piston-powered helicopters, the throttle either needs to be moved manually by the pilot or it can be controlled by a governor in the case of a Robinson like the R44 to my right. The cyclic and collective are linked mechanically to the non-rotating swash plate. In most helicopters, these controls are hydraulically boosted, so the push-pull tubes actually attach to hydraulic servos before attaching to the swash blade. The last push-pull tubes are called the pitch links, and these actually connect to the pitch horns on the main rotor. The pitch horns of the main rotor are offset by 90 degrees due to something called gyroscopic precession. I'm not going to cover gyroscopic precession because you don't need to know what that is. In fact, no one needs to know what that is. Both the cyclic and collective control the pitch links. This required early helicopter designers to solve a rather complex problem. How do you transfer linear motion to something that's spinning? The ingenious solution is called a swash plate. Doesn't seem that ingenious. A swash plate is actually two plates that have to remain parallel to each other, a rotating plate and a non-rotating plate. The rotating plate spins on top of the non-rotating plate with a bearing. The bearing is also greased heavily to reduce friction even further. When a helicopter pilot puts a cyclic motion in, say, stick to the right, the motion is transferred through the push-pull tubes to the bell cranks, to the hydraulic servos, more push-pull tubes, 
and eventually to the pitch links. The non-rotating plate is pulled downward to the right. The rotating plate, because it has to remain parallel, is also moved downward to the right. This pulls one of the pitch links down as the blades and rotating plates spin around and then eventually pushes it back upward. Okay, so we figured out how to transfer linear motion to a rotating plate, right? But how does this translate to moving the helicopter to the right? The tilt of the rotating plate means that when the pitch link of the rotor blade comes around, it is pulled downward, lowering the pitch of its respective rotor blade. By lowering the pitch, the blade dives downward, which tilts the rotor disc to the right until it rotates further and the pitch link follows the non-rotating plate back upwards, increasing its pitch and causing it to climb again. That's how all cyclic motions, forward, back, left, and right, are transferred to the main rotor. What about the collective? The collective control follows a similar path of push-pull tubes, bell cranks, hydraulic servo push-pull tubes to the non-rotating plate, but it raises the entire plate all at once, which moves both pitch lengths at the same time. If both the cyclic and collective both move the same non-rotating plate, doesn't moving them individually conflict with one another? Well, it would, except for a fancy mechanical unit called the mixing unit, which is just a series of bell cranks to ensure that the cyclic motions remain in when the collective is raised or lowered. This is a good thing, as without a mixing unit, a helicopter would be substantially more difficult to control. I'd love to show you a video of the mixing unit, but it's buried inside the helicopter, and we're not going to take it apart just for that. And by the way, it's just a bunch of bell cranks. God, stop with the bell cranks. Actually, you should all hit the subscribe bell. That's the only bell I want to hear right now. I'll see you next time, and let's review. Radio check. Check. Yeah, I got you. Got me? Yep. Roger. Check.